Chapter One Logan Miss Taylor gave me a smile, the kind I secretly dubbed the soothing guidance counselor smile. She wore it the way she wore her soft cardigan, the conscious choice made to put problem students like myself at ease. How was your summer, Logan? Fine. My summer had been spent in a haze of Netflix and scrolling through pictures of Sophie until ink and I gave way to watery sunlight and my brain felt like it was about to dribble out of my ears. It was great, actually. I got lots of rest. My voice came out thick and slow, maybe because I hadn't been sleeping well and always felt like I was groping my way through a fog, maybe because I had a permanent lump in my throat. That's wonderful to hear, Logan. Why does she always have to say my name at the end of every sentence? Are you feeling prepared for the new semester, Logan? Yeah, I said. I'm ready to join the team again. Miss Taylor's smile lost some wattage. Let's come back to the cross later, after our chat. I try to find the familiar anger, the old gunpowder barrel of energy that would wrench me out of this murk and make me feel something. It was there. I knew it was. I could feel it lurking at the edges, reaching out for me. But I was so tired. Honestly, I wasn't even sure if I cared about getting back on the team. But Dad said what I really needed was to get back to sports, get a good sweat going, thrash it out on the field. Like if I could only run hard enough, I'd be able to unrun Sophie's ghost. When we talked last spring, you were going through a really challenging time. I winced at the memory of my last session with Miss Taylor. I'd been consumed by rage then. I'd call her a bitch and then something worse. And she sat there silently, looking very disappointed. I'm sorry, I mumbled. Miss Taylor smiled. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate that. How are you feeling about being back at Draycott? Like I was thrust into a graveyard, ghosts everywhere. But I had to move on. Sophie would have wanted me to move on. I'm fine, really. I was just kind of derailed by my classmate's death. Made me question my own morality or whatever. How ridiculous to refer to the love of my life as my classmate. Like we were strangers who passed each other in the hallway. Miss Taylor gave a sympathetic grimace. I understand. No, you fucking don't. No one knew Sophie like I did. No one had any idea how her death had completely devastated my life. We never dated, not officially, but our love was the real deal. Nobody understood, though. She's leading you on, they told me. But they didn't know Sophie the way I knew her when it was just us. I tuned out the next few minutes as Miss Taylor rambled on about how she expected great and wonderful things from me and how she'd have a chat with Coach about letting me back on the team and how I totally would be allowed back as long as I pulled my grades up and didn't mouth off to teachers again and behave like a good little boy. You'll be fine, Logan. I believe in you. You're a good kid, she said, getting up. You're going to do great things this semester. I know it. Her words stayed with me as I walked back to my dorm room. Do great things. It felt like a threat than anything. Do great things or get suspended again, maybe even expelled. Do great things or get rejected by every college by a loser and be a loser for the rest of your life. I checked my phone. I had close to an hour before the assembly. The early morning sun was painting everything a golden hue. The lush, rolling fields, the ivy wrapped around Draycott's Academy sandstone buildings. Everything shone with warmth. Another slow wave of resentment. Before Sophie died, I would have stood still and taken it all in. I would have asked her to walk with me to the rose garden to admire the dewy flowers before telling her she was more beautiful than any rose. Now, beauty was wasted on me. I trudged back to my room and got ready for class. But by the time I put on my navy blue blazer, gathered all my books, and messed up my hair in just the right way, I was exhausted. I walked to the common room, where Josh was finishing up his coffee. He waved at me and smiled. Was the smile just the slightest bit stained? I tried my best to smile back like I meant it. Hey man, how was your summer? He asked, giving me a one-armed hug. It was okay. How was yours? Josh started yapping about how his folks had taken him and his sister to Bordox for the summer. Somehow, I managed to follow him 
out of the dorm. Summer was still clinging to the air with sticky stubbornness, never mind the fact that it was already September and Draycott Academy was surrounded by lush, green, northern Californian hills. All around us were excited cries like, Oh my God, did you guys hook up over the break? And, Did you see Jenna's new boobs? Groups of two cool to care seniors and terrified freshmen chattered and shrieked giggled, and I was so done with my schoolmates. It wasn't even nine o'clock yet, but my shirt was already sticking to my back with sweat. I struggled to pay attention to Josh's incessant chatter. I wasn't imagining it. There was definitely a strange quality to his cheerfulness, like he was determined to talk to me the way he used to be able to. What was he even going on about? Something about hooking up with a French girl over the summer. Try harder! I lost so many friends over the past year. I couldn't afford to lose Josh, too. Sounds hot, I said. That was the most I could come up with. Josh laughed like I just said something exceptional. Yeah, man, it was totally hot. He gave me his usual not a care in the world grin, but I didn't miss the flash of concern in his eyes. I wasn't sure if I was worried about me or about his own social status. Someone shouted as we made our way across the quad, catching my attention. A handful of sophomores were playing with the frisbee in the commons. They leapt and ran like gleeful Labradors. I watched them and wondered what it was like to be so invested in the game. I used to be into this stuff too, but for the life of me, now I couldn't remember what that felt like. Distracted, I started when I bumped into someone. No, not someone. Her. My phone slipped out of my hand and the screen lit up when it bounced on the ground. Nine. Oh, 01 AM. I'd remember those exact numbers for the rest of my life. The exact time, down to the minute, when the universe lifted its slow, giant hand, reached straight through my skull and into the center of my brain and said, You've gone through enough, Logan. Here she is. I'm delivering her to you personally. She is all yours. I wanted to grab her, feel her warm flesh beneath my fingers, and check if she was real. Her face was eerily similar to Sophie's, and they swam in my mind and overlapped. I'm so sorry, she exclaimed, and her eyes met mine for a split second. She crouched down and picked up my phone. I hope I didn't break it. Her voice was sincere and shy, as she was biting her lower lip slightly. Her eyebrows furrowed like she was genuinely worried, and God, I wanted to tell her it was okay. Everything was okay because she was here and I bet she tasted like strawberries at the height of summer. I searched my mind for something memorable to say, something to put a smile on those lips of hers. You did. Oh, God, why did I say that? It was true that there was a giant crack on my phone, but really, who gives a shit? Penny crossed her face. I'm so sorry. I'll, um, I'll pay you back, Um, but it might have to be in installments. With those tears in her eyes, holy crap. It's fine. I said. I meant it to come out reassuring, but it came out gruff. I might as well be hobbling, waving my cane, and yelling at kids to get off my lawn. Josh must have sensed my disaster, finally, because he laughed and said, Don't worry about it. Logan Year can afford like a million of these things. I wanted to throttle him. I at least had the excuse of the Sophie Fog. Josh was just a massive idiot. Probably thought he was making the situation better like telling girls my family was loaded would help me get laid. The girl's forehead turned red and her entire face shut down. Fucking Josh. Fucking guidance counselor. Fucking. I'm so, so sorry. I... Her voice cracked a little. I couldn't bear to see her face. Perfect. So tortured. I mumbled something about it being okay and walked away. I didn't look back. Even though her presence, her aura, everything about her burned a hole in my back and I was left alone with Josh. Josh, who couldn't possibly grasp what had just happened, how the skies had parted so the universe could bring me down, this gift to me, and now I'd really rest it all up. I fed Josh some bullshit about how I wasn't feeling well, though in fact, I was feeling like I'd come back to life. Mortified, yes, but mortification was better than being a zombie. I bounded after her, hungry, Famished, really, to catch more of her, she disappeared into Wheeler Wall, where the science classes were located, and when I pushed through the double doors, I was greeted by a sea of students, 
all tan skin and newly dyed hair. I'd lost her. I spent the next period hiding in one of the restrooms at Wheeler so no one would notice I was cutting class. It wasn't like I could explain why I had to do this. No one would understand. They judged me again, just like mom did when she found all those pictures and videos of Sophie. Not that it mattered. This was all in the past. It was as though everything that had happened with Sophie was to prepare me for this girl. I closed my eyes and thought of her. Though guys like Josh wouldn't find her hot, I noticed her subtle beauty. She looked half Asian, half white. Sophie was of Japanese descent. At first glance, the girl could have been Sophie's sister. There were differences, though. Sophie was all about the makeup. Her lips, always colored and glossed. Her skin smooth and airbrushed. Her eyes lined so her gaze was piercing and impossible to ignore. I never once saw Sophie without makeup, even toward the end, when everyone said she was losing it. Even then, she still kicked that stuff on. This girl looked like Sophie unmasked, fresh, naked, maybe just a touch of balm on those heart-shaped lips. What would it be like to kiss her, to taste her? I willed myself from thoughts of the mysterious girl's lips to the rest of her, the way she moved, the way she hunched her shoulders ever so slightly, the way she turned her head and cast her eyes downward, not quite at her feet, the flash of alarm that had sparked through her eyes when I dropped my phone. She was shy. That much was obvious. I couldn't mess this up. I lost so much already. I came out of my hiding place and stationed myself on the landing between the first and second floor. A short while later, the bell clanged and kids flooded the hallway, blocking my view. I wanted to scream at them to stop chattering, stop fucking moving. And there she was, walking next to Ayesha Johnson. So a senior then, like me. I couldn't not move toward her. She was so magnetic. How could all these idiots not notice her? I had to remind myself to keep some distance between us. Not so hard once you get used to, Aisha was saying. Someone jostled me, and I missed the next few words. I wanted to strangle everybody around us. Luckily, once we were outside, I could make out more of what they were saying. Volleyball tryouts later, the girl said, and her voice was like a finger flicking a light switch in my head, making everything suddenly, suddenly bright. I'm so excited, Aisha said. I'm so glad you're your D. I expected D to smile and tell Aisha how glad she was to be here too. But instead, an awkward silence followed. Um, sorry, I didn't mean like, um, obviously I'm not glad about what brought you here. Aisha's voice trailed off and she fidgeted with her hands. No, it's fine. I know what you mean. I missed you so much when you started boarding here. And yes, I know we kept in touch, but it's just not the same. Definitely not the same, Aisha grinned at her. Do you need a tour of the place? No, I pretty much know where everything is. Oh yeah, I forgot you started working over here in the summer instead of hanging out with me. Dee laughed. Oh man, I can't believe we're going to the same school again. After all this time, Delilah and Aisha united again. Delilah. I said it silently, letting my tongue caress each syllable, tasting it. Delilah, the name of my destiny. I followed her until she disappeared into the next class, and then I stood there for a while, smiling my first will smile in a long time. Do great things. Miss Taylor had no fucking clue how great this semester was going to be. End of chapter one. Thank you so much for listening, my loves, and I'll see you in chapter two. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.